We've talked a lot about showing players certain things and even had buttons for player interaction. But what if we want players to be able to provide in information to our systems to do stuff with? So today we're going to talk about the first of the player input stuff that we're going to be uh, talking about in the next couple of videos as well. And that will mostly be things like sliders. A slider is very easily just a thing that a player can interact with, which will output a value from 0 to 1. So if we go into the event graph and I add back in uh, my tech event and I get my slider, I can uh, get the value from my slider. And as you can see, it also has a minimum and a maximum value. So by default, it gives you a value between 0 and 1, I should say. Uh, but you can set this value to be anything you want. You you can also make the slider uh, vertical if you want to. That's very fun. So if we just print out the uh, value that we have here, and we're going to be printing it for duration of data time so that we don't spam our screen full, you will uh, very easily see that we have the slider prints out zero, and that goes up to a value of one. If I then go in and set the uh, minimum value here to, let's say, 100, and then I set the maximum value to 800 as just a random example, you will see that it doesn't immediately work because its default value is zero. Uh, but then if I even just touch it, it goes to 100. And then again, it just interpolates between the minimum and maximum value based on the distance of the slider. So that is pretty straightforward, uh, I would say. Uh, let's set this back to a value of zero to one because I'm going to show you a progress bar as well. A progress bar isn't something that you really like interact with, but I didn't really want to make a separate video about just a progress bar because these things are ridiculously simple. A progress bar is just kind of like the opposite of a slider. You give in a value between 0 and 1 and then it fills itself in with the color and opacity and all that kind of stuff that you provide it in with. So if we in event tick also set our progress bar, we set percent and we set it just to the value of our slider. You'll see as easily as that, it will just match our progress bar to whatever we set our slider to. This can be useful for very basic HP bars. The moment you start doing like more fancy stuff with your HP bars, it might make more sense to render them onto an image with a dynamic material. But for very basic like HP bar stuff, especially for like prototyping, uh, this works fine. And you can do some more fancy looking stuff with this uh, in the appearance as well, I believe. Like you can turn this on and that makes it kind of like fancy, more like a loading bar, right? You have different uh, skill types for masking or for scaling. You can fill it in a variety of different ways, left to right, right to left, uh, fill from the center, which is really kind of weird, but that's a thing that you can do, uh, the top to bottom, whatever you want. There's a lot of options with these progress bars that you can uh, just play around with. Going back to the topic of sliders, though, uh, you should also note that we do have a radial slider as well. And this essentially is just a normal slider uh, on a circle. You can say where on the circle it needs to start and where on the circle it needs to end. So you can have just like a part of a circle, like a bit of a curve. It's just a bit of a fancier way to include a slider uh, if you want to. This one also has a slider hand that it can show, just from the center to wherever the slider thing is. I don't personally love showing that, but that's a thing that you can do. And this works just as you would expect it to. Uh, you pick the handle and then you actually like can move it around in whatever way you want just left to right still does work it gets a little iffier uh when you have like a super long radial slider at which point you might actually need to start like making radial movements because just doing this doesn't quite work right so now you actually need to start like doing this radial movement in order to move the radial slider. This slider's range, uh, for some reason, is driven by a curve instead of just an input and a output value. So that's actually really quite useful because that way you can make the first bit and the last bit maybe either add more or less aggressive values and have the middle bits just kind of be more consistent, right? So we can say this is just a value of 0 to 1. But if I set the value at time 1, time is just the axis of the slider itself. Uh, but if I set this to like 500, for instance, 
and we uh, scale this back to normal. I can add in multiple extra keys. And let's say that the first 10% will only go from a value of uh, like 0 to 10. And then the last 10%, so from uh, 0 0.9 to here, will do the last like 50. This is a really kind of like weird curve. Well, let's do it the last 20. There's a really kind of weird curve where the start and the end don't really add much uh, to itself. But if we now hook this one up uh, to our print string, and if we then uh, get the value, let's use this uh, function that we have for that here, and we put that into the print string instead, we'll be able to see that it does do like up to 10 for this first bit, but then it very quickly starts doing much more and we get to like, 490 here and then it starts doing much smaller increments here at the end we could also set this up to maybe uh toward the end here instead of going uh all the way from like 480 to 500 uh we can say well actually we want 90 percent to just be 500 and then a thousand for the last 10 percent right just to show you that it does that so this just does the same linear interpolation but the moment we get to like 500 you can see the last 10% does a bunch more. That goes all the way up to 1,000 now. So this one responds to a curve, uh, whereas this one is just linear interpolation, which means that this can be a little bit more useful. Frankly, I would actually enjoy it if this one also could respond to a curve, but doesn't seem like it can. So that is sliders and progress bars. Mostly sliders. Uh, progress bars is kind of thrown in there because it thematically fits. Over the next couple of videos, we're also going to input text and have drop-down menus that we can create. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And a huge thank you to my Cave Big Brain tier supporters, which care more for coding than impulse control, Earl Monserville Erno, my cave students tier supporters, Oiku, and my cave digger tier supporters, Mauricio Farias.